So we are live now. Uh, so good evening. Uh, I'm Dr. Bansha Chin Chujit from Thammasat University and my co-chair, Dr. Patrasit. Okay. So on behalf of the Thailand Orthopedic Society for Sport Medicine, we uh, would like to welcome all of you to our uh, first webinar. So today we are talking about the rotator cuff repair using the bicep augmentations. So we have uh, four renowned speakers. Yeah, Dr. Yang Su Kim from Korea. He's the king of bicep SCR. Dr. Shanagan from Chiang Mai. Dr. Ekovit from Sililat Hospital. And Dr. Trai from Bangkok. Okay. So uh, this is our panelist, one of our <laughs> panelists, Dr. Shanagan. He's a, he's a real man. What, what kind of operation you did? He, he did the meniscus, um, he had torn his meniscus. Yeah. Oh, no. Dr. Shinakan, his tissue is not so healthy. He is the, like a middle aged old man and he's torn, oh, no, no. he's torn his meniscus again. That's not right. <laughs> yeah. Shinakan, get well soon, Shinakan, and thank you for your coming. Yeah. Good. So, uh, we have four speakers today. We start with Yang Su Kim. He's talking about how I manage bicep for loaded calf repair. Dr. Ekovit, he will talk about side-to-side -side repair and clinical results. Dr. Tanya Khan, he will share his experience about tips and tricks for bicep autograft for a large uh, loaded calf tear. And Dr. Dry, he will talk about do we need to cut the distal biceps after using it as local graft. Okay, so for the massive irreparable calf tear, there's so many options from conservative, okay, to partial repair, SCR, okay, balloon tendon transfer, or and reverse. So we are Asian people. We are not like the French, right? The French guy they like to cut the bicep. They call French guy like bicep killers and the bicep SCR originated from Asia country, from Dr. Yang Su Kim. So nowadays it's quite popular in Thailand. Okay, we are the bicep safer. And this is original uh, SCR, supracapsular reconstruction, using the tension fascia lata or IT band that you need to harvest the graft and uh, you invest a lot and that's technical demanding. So Yang Su, he proposed this bicep SCR and he used this like a local graft. It's the same concept like you have plastic surgeon, right? They try to do local flap first. Bicep is already there while you have the IT band that is so far from the shoulder. Okay, we are the shoulder surgeons while you have the other tibia band. Same concept like plastic surgeon. They prefer to use a local graft, okay? Mm -hmm. uh, instead of distant flap. Like Mihata way, they use the ideal tibial band, right? So the benefit of this is like is local graft and less technical demanding. Also, this bicep is a vascularized tissue that can promote the healing because it's the biologic uh, tissue augmentation. So our concern is about the bicep, right? Innervated structures, and this may cause pain or not. Yeah, we can hear from our speakers, okay? And also to uh, save the bicep that, that can change your mechanics of the shoulder or not. Okay, so we end the poll and um, would like to invite Dr. Yang Su Kim, correct, okay, from Korea. Dr. Yang Su Kim, he's a, he's the elect uh, president. He's going to be the next president of Shoulder and Elbow Society, Korean. Yeah, SES next president. So, Yang Su. You ready? Yeah. yeah, I'm ready. Yeah, thank you, Yang Su. Go ahead. Your turn. Okay. Is it working? Yeah. Work, working. Very well. Uh, I guess, thank you. I'm Yang Su Kim from Korea, Scarlet University. And uh, is, I'm very pleased to have a chance to present my study and my technique in this awesome this webinar, custom webinar meeting. And I, will, I will share my experience with the rotator cuff tail using biceps 
So I, I named the bicep rewriting technique. So the subtitle is how do I manage biceps for the calf repair? And the congratulations again. And uh, I have many friends in Thailand. And the Chanaka and the Bancha is here. I'm here there. So second row and the uh, ache and the uh, fracassi and the many friends of mine. So I love to enjoy my uh, experience and my thought. Actually, there are various treatment modality in basic cup tear. And there's such many options. Sometimes make it difficult to determine the best way to treat the large domestic of tear. So from the non-operative treatment to the gastroplasty. So one day I wonder, I wonder can we use a long head bicep tendon for treatment for mesic of tear? So actually there was a reported technique of tendon augmentation using long head biceps. The interposition of a tenotomized bicep tendon to bridge the gap between the tongue tendon, cuff tendon is also the possible improvement to clinical outcome for mesic of tear. This is a convention. This video shows a biceps augmentation technique. The cutting the original biceps tendon, the repair the cut, cut the end to cut tendon, and then tie the knot and cutting and insert the medial anchor just after you know particular cartilage and suture the torn tendon cuff with the bicep tendon and collect the suture, suture from the medial tie and insert a lateral uh, anchor to finish the transosage cabinet technique. So this is a conventional biceps augmentation. It looks very good. So I conducted a prospective comparative study with my patient, with the 67 patient who underwent arthroscopic repair for life cuff tear. They are located two groups. The group one is a repair with the biceps augmentation technique that I showed in the previous video. And group two is a repair without biceps augmentation. And uh, we evaluate uh, functional outcome, initial and post-op like this, and the uh, MRI performed at uh, one year after surgery in all patients to evaluate the tendon integrity. As a result, there was no significant difference in range of motion and the pain and the function score, <coughs> sorry, and the no significant difference in the rate between two groups. So I was a little bit disappointed this technique because I, uh, <coughs> since I spent much time to augment the balloon and biceps. So in this study, uh, I suggest the expense of operation time and effort for augmenting Looking the biceps is not mandatory. So, don't worry, I'm not coronal infection. Uh, so then I come across an idea. How about using looking the bicep tendon without cutting it? Just stay, just let them there, let it there. So I recently reported novel technique of this technique and then change the title as a arthroscopic bicep rating technique after publication. In this technique, the biceps tendon is moved from the, this original group to the center of the footprint and then repair the, the cuff tendon. That's the second step. So this is a, a, is a, is a kind of picture that I made. The so soft tissue is released from the biceps glue as a first step, uh, which make the biceps move freely, and then make a new groove in the middle of the cuff, uh, the footprint. Then using the lateral anchor and the medial anchor, the rewritten biceps fixed with the suture, and insert the additional suture anchor to the posterior lateral corner and they repair the torn cuff tendon and finish the operation. This is original technique of bicep repeat. This is a video that my patient is right shoulder 
insert the lateral anchor and the bicep release and reroute to the center and insert the medial anchor and tie the uh, biceps like this and additional uh, suture anchor to repair the top tendon posterior in the finished operation. Uh, there are many advantages of biceps routing technique. First of all, it's no outside technique or inside the procedure, and this make uh, possible to reduce operation time and risk of infection. And most of all, the routed biceps tendon, I expect it, can function as a superior capsule and internal sprint. This internal sprint to protect or repair the tendon during the copy healing. So, rooted biceps press the shoulder head the downward, then make a, a shoulder stable. This situation, this environment, I think is helpful to heal the repair the tendon itself. And additionally, this technical easier than SCR is a uh, original system with transfusion lateral of the allegory left and no donor site mobility, and there is a tendon disease effect. Going at the biceps, kind of this is it. This is another important factor. And disadvantages is the looking at the biceps should be there. Without biceps, we cannot do that. So this is a, uh, is a disadvantages. And I conducted a biomechanical study with this technique with the Schumann cadaver. And the total eight cadaver shoulder were used for testing. I published in CSS. And uh, uh, five conditions were set. First is intact, second is mesical tear, and third is a uh, partial repair like this. And the fourth is a partial repair with the bicep routine. And the fifth one is bicep routine with the side side repair. This is a simulated, com is a, is a simulated uh, rear situation of patient's shoulder. And we measured the outcome as follows. Superior humor translation and second one is sub contact, sub contact pressure with tax scan like this in the microscope with the rota rotational range of motion. It's a corneal matter. It's the three major outcomes. As a result, after bicep routing and the side side repair, the superior trans humor translation was significantly decreased compared with the massive cocktail or partial repair at zero and 20 degree abduction, like this. And the uh, bicep routine showed a significantly decreased subacromal contact pressure at zero degree abduction. And the uh, total range of motion, when it comes to total range of motion, the bicep routine did not decrease total rotation range of motion compared with the intake condition. So in this study, I conclude the bicep routine technique biomechanically restored the shoulder stability without over constraining the range of motion in mesical tear. So without stiffness, without making stiffness post-operatively. Uh, and uh, this paper is uh, under review, the JSCES is a, uh, Actually, I uh, conducted the bicep routing uh, totally uh, one, 129 patients with large domestic healthcare from the 2007 March. And uh, among them is, uh, is we include the eight patients who can be can follow longer than 18 months. The average age is 64.5 years in the follow up. Uh, follow period is 19.3 months. The average tail size is 27, 2.77 cm AP diameter and this uh, 3.1 cm retraction. And we checked the MRI all the patient, eight patient in two months and the 61 patient in one year. We measured the outcome like this range of motion, plank film and the MRI to check the integrity of the rooted biceps and the rooted tendon. The clinical result shows the functional score is significantly improved from the post of the six, 12 months and less follow compared with the initial like this. And the range of motion is restored uh, from uh, six months after operation to the normal. 
and the pain is also significantly decreased from three months to six, seven in the last follow-ups. And the image finding shows the average equine humor distance significantly increase from seven to nine cm uh, compared with the initial X-ray. And uh, when it comes to the retail rate, the rotator cuff tail retail rate has a 26.6% at first of one year. And rooted biceps is also retail rate in 22.9% at first of one year. Well, uh, as the MRI shows, the MRI shows the mainly the rooted biceps tear, retear uh, at the medial tie side. Sometimes the lateral tie side, but you know, it's the original technique. I tie the lateral and medial, of course, the two side, but medial tie side is usually occur for the biceps tear. So I modify a little bit to reduce, avoid over tensioning, over tension in the medial side. This, this is a schematic drawing. I have to release the soft tissue around the biceps group and then make a new group in the biceps and the footprint and insert a lateral anchor and biceps rerouting like this. And then medialized with the motorized bone about one cm. Then instead of insert the one anchor, but I insert the two anchor uh, one is anterior, the one is posterior to the biceps, and then repaired. Not repair the biceps itself, just repair the, the cuff. Then make a kind of some boundary to restrict the wall, so it cannot move the biceps and their posterior. So fix the biceps on the lateral, and the, and not tie the middle and middle wall. This is a uh, modified to reduce the of tension in the middle of the tight side. So, uh, it's a, as a most recently, is a, this is a video, it's a lateral loop suture and middle sling technique I showed uh, with my patient. This is a right shoulder from the lateral view portal and release the biceps from the 6 cm from the plate traversity and the check the mobility they make a new group deeply and they insert a lateral suture anchor using this one is a biceps rerouted. And when you tie the lateral loop, I insert inserted the this kind of the not push up kind of something else. So inter, this is a making a loop more widening. Not is a strangulation, strangle the biceps itself. So losing losing the tie. And then inserted the medial anchor, posterior medial anchor like this. And then when you insert the anterior lateral anchor, one of those one of the strand is uh, fixing together like this, just pushing, pushing. So prevent uh, prevent uh, on here, prevent the uh, lift of the bone. And then repair the uh, torn cuff tender like this. So this is a recently modify the technique and the bicep rating. So this is the biceps and the cup repair like this. Okay, so this is the thing, medial sling technique. So is a, this is, a, this is a, uh, you're almost done. This uh, data, I collected the data for this webinar seminar. I compare with the 84 patient who are doing that social group repair, right muscular tear. We divide the two group. One group is partial repair, and the two group is bicep routine. Compare with the and the range of motion or pain or score and MRI for the tender integrity. Compare with both group. The as a result, there's no significant difference in the bicep pain and range of motion functional score. And also, when it comes to retail rate, I'm a little bit disappointed. It's not significantly different, but the number is totally different. It's a group partial repair, so more than 80, eight, uh, more than 40% of the group show the retail, but group two, bicep retaining group is 28%, 28.5% is retail rate. So in my series, it's a retail rate 
of, of the lateral cut is 25, 28% in large domestic cut pair with the bicep urethra. So, I can summary is biceps BL by mechanical restore the shoulder stability in the large domestic cut pair. And the uh, just take me with the good clinical outcomes without compromising function and uh, complication with the virutin biceps itself. So I believe it can be one of the treatment options for large domestic cocktail. Thank you for listening. Thank you, Yang Su. Really nice talk. Okay, Yang Su, yeah. before we starting the next presentation, Dr. Shanakan. So there's some questions from the uh, uh, participants, they're asking, in case you have bad bicep qualities, because many times in massive cuff, when you get in, the bicep is fraying or partial tear, do you still use this bicep for uh, your work? Very good question, very good yes. question. That is my concern still. I have no yeah. concrete answer, but, and I tried, I, I have a, I said already one twenty-eight patient I did among them, mm -hmm. Around 30% of patients has not healthy biceps. Yeah. But I tried to. I, I, I did. I did a bicep routine uh, uh, so operation. But you say 30%, right, Yang Su? Yeah, 30% in my hands. 3 so, zero have no bicep, right? Yeah, the other is no bicep. Okay. No biceps, we cannot do that. So, yeah, right. Uh, but is a, I think uh, is a partial tear less than 25-40% is a can be available I can use because yes. a lateral anchor I showed the lateral anchor lateral anchor is a loop the yeah. loop biceps let me show lateral anchor using the when you reroot the biceps that make a biceps looping that make a little bit is a tendon yeah. is correct so, like this, this grab is a looping, the, there's a tying, this situation, this uh, procedure is a, is a, is a bicep tendon is together, is a making a loop, uh, the loop shape. So, I can, I, I think uh, we can use a little bit on, on healthy biceps for yeah. this technique. Okay, really nice. So Yang Su, there's a question from Dr. Victor from Ecuador. Mm -hmm. so he's so far. Dr. Victor from Ecuador, he asking, Dr. Kim, do you tie or suture the rotator cuff to the reposition biceps tendon as well? Uh, the, you asked me to repair the tendon with the biceps? Yeah. Each other? Yeah. Sometimes, sometimes. But mainly, I did not. Many I did not. So, and I don't think we need to repair the bicep between the uh, tendon and biceps. Biceps just rerouting as a is a function as an internal sprint, and then uh, cuff tendon is partially repaired. Okay, to the bone. And I I checked the MRI after operation. The bicep tendon and uh, the repair the tendon is healing each other. There's a healing between the tendon and uh, cuff tendon and biceps. Okay, so many questions. Many One questions. question from Indonesia, Dr. Alisna. It's a very excellent presentation. Uh, he wants to ask you about leaving the attachment of the biceps tendons. It considers still a dynamic structures he asking, is that the dynamic structure, or it is it may cause lesion in the surrounding structures like slab? Uh, okay. Yeah. Is, uh, he asked me the after biceps routing, the biceps has a tenodesis with the right. medial anchor and lateral anchor. So this is a tenodesis. It's a it's not dynamic stabilizer anymore. This yeah. change it. It's a static stabilizer after yeah. we routing because we fixed the bone, the bicep with the two anchor, middle and lateral anchor. Yeah. And the patient have a slap lesion, like a bicep 
as the origin is there is a little bit tear yeah uh, with the slab lesion like a slab lesion i repaired the slab lesion oh you repair it also yeah right? i repaired actually okay. the patient is a little bit senior patient it's old enough so i i don't like to call as a slab lesion just a slab lesion is a totally different uh, is a mechanism is a pathogenesis here so the senior patient with the slab lesion i like to call the bicep and the superior labrum tear so this is yeah. it looks the same but the terminology is uh, i don't like a slab lesion in the old patient so i repair the yeah. tom labrum lesion superior labrum lesion when i yeah. apply the bl technique thank you dr prakasit can you uh, ask the yes. next question dr yes Patrick? um yeah. next question Next question is from Dr. Pakapon Israkaisin from Bangkok Hospital. He has a question for you, Yang Su. Mm -hmm. Is there any patient that has a further bicep anchor tear after bicep rerouting? Bicep anchor? Yeah. Origin? You mean the origin? Yep. Ah. Bicep anchor. Origin. Yeah, yeah right. It's a very good question. I, yes. I, concern. I, I have concern when I started my uh, technique 2017 I expected I concerned the like uh, aversion aversion tear from the biceps origin mm -hmm. because uh, is a uh, over over stress over loading the bicep mm -hmm. tendon when you rerouted the biceps but when I carefully carefully inspect my MRI post of MRI yeah the glute tear is the anchor origin root tear is very rare. Usually, mm -hmm. I told already, usually rooted biceps tear occurred in the medial thigh or sometimes lateral thigh. So I modified, I tried to my best to modify the, my original technique to avoid over tensioning the medial and lateral thigh. Okay. Okay. One question okay. from Shanakan and then we move to the next talk. Shanagan, what's your questions? Oh, no, no, I have, I have no question. I just asked to, uh, uh, why were you asking the question? Can you stop changing screen so I prepare my, 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 my life? It looks so sleepy. Okay. <laughs> yeah, I do. Shanagan, you look so weak. So, uh, so I, I skip the, Yangs to you stop chatting and then Shanagan. Yeah, he's the next. Okay. Thank you, Yangsu. Uh, There's still some more questions for you, but, but we keep it uh, later, okay? Okay, I will stay. I will stay here. Yeah, good. Thank you, Yangsu. So, Shenagan, you ready? Yep, give me one second to share my slide. Yeah. Okay, here we go. Can you see my slide? Yeah. Okay. Very nice. Here. So, now the participant is nearly 200 now. 168. Wow. Yeah. Big audience. Yeah. Oh, big, big. Thank you very much. I'm ready, Bancha. Yes, you're ready. Uh, Let's go. Yeah. Okay. Let's go. Uh, thank you very much for the organizing committee to uh, deliver this talk and make great honor to be talking after Yang So we, we can say he's a godfather of the bicep uh, user. So I told you tips and tricks about the bicep autograph in large cup repair. We said about large cup repair, for my thought, it's probably equal to like a repairable repair. That can be partially repair or the repair with the high tension that most likely is going to fail. So what should we do with that situation? So this is the option for using the biceps. We can use the bicep to graft the defect. We can use it as a supercapsular reconstruction or the newcomer, the entry cable reconstruction. So usually when you patient like this. Yeah. Give me one minute. Oh, Shanagan. Sorry, Shanagan, you okay? Where is he? Oh, yeah, he is. Maybe he is some room meeting. No, sir. Okay. Shanagan, you okay? Um, so anyone, 
by his fellows. Shagan, you have good to go now. Yeah, better. But you talk about the massive tear. I deal with the patient with two main problems. First is the pain, the second is the, the weakness. So I usually divide the patient into a group like this. So the first problem when the patient have the pain in predominant, like that, when you have more pain than the weakness. So and when you look at those uh, those patients and they are too young to do too young to do a replacement. They are sedentary, so they don't want to get passive surgery such as the reverse the shoulder or tendon transfer, and they have no arthritis. So in my thought, probably graft the defect and balloon is the option for, for those patients. I show you with a case. This is a case of 63 years old female who had a traffic accident, and she dislocated her shoulder, and she has to do paralysis for, for three months. And obviously, you can see that her... Uh, her physical examination showed that she has pseudo paralysis and quite weak on the supraspinatus, infraspinatus, and subscapularis. And this is her x ray and the MRI. She's narrowing uh, the acromohumor distance. The supraspinatus has torn and almost retracted. The MRI shows partial tear of subscapularis and the uh, upper part of uh, infraspinatus. The, uh, the supraspinatus is quite uh, atrophy. So this is the, usually the option for, for, for the patient when you get a big tear. You can do either repair, if you can, you want to have a complete repair, you can do a tendon graft patch, SCR, tendon transfer, or arthroplasty. So let's decide with this patient. This patient, this is her problem, is the pain, like I mentioned before. So her expectation is that pain relief. She wants to have a pain relief. The function is okay, but she's 63, and she didn't do any much physical work anymore. And this is when we look at the uh, arthroscopy finding. You see, that's the footprint. We look at the bicep is there. It's not good, but it's not that bad. The subs kept partially torn uh, like that. And also the, the, the anterior part that damaged from the dislocation. When you look on top on the right picture right here, you see that the footprint can be easily covered. But you see, this is a big defect right there. This is infraspinatus, and this is scapular spine. And this is a big hole right there where the defect has gone. And you can't really hold the posterior part of supraspinatus to reach the, the tear. Just somewhat in the front part left, like that. Not that good, but not too much. Not too big enough to repair the tendon. Then there come a choice that you can have just a partial repair, tendon graft or the SCR. She's, like I mentioned, she's quite old and she doesn't want an aggressive surgery. So in this case, we decided to do the uh, graft. We cut the bicep and then we dilute it. This is the bicep. This is a defect, the hole we have. So we dilute it up. This is the tendon of supraspinatus footprint that have remaining. So then we repair the uh, supraspinatus like that. And this is the repair. So you still left with a big defect like that. How will you deal with that? You can leave it like that, but I'm not sure that that how how the pain uh, will relieve or not. So what we did, we cut the bicep this study as I shown. Uh I we stitch it to the the graft, stitch it to the uh anterior part of uh, sub, uh supraspinatus like that. We stitches about four or five stitches. Now we stitch the, the A into the uh, infraspinatus right there. Like that. We did something like that for another 20, 30 minutes. So we stitch almost 360. Now we stitch to this, the back like that. Like that, stitch. So uh, this is the end result. After I graph the bicep to the defect, we have a complete uh, coverage of the uh, humeral head. You can't really see the humeral head anymore. It's right there. And this is the whole thing. And this is her after a month. She's satisfied. She has a pain less. She can move her shoulder up. Like that. 
actually the alpha refrain has gone the pseudo paralysis has gone as well and we have a chance to do the follow-up mri onto the calf is intact and uh she's quite happy this is her at six months so i call this procedure that calf thing the defect with the biceps so when when I want to do this, the uh, procedure, I would choose to do this procedure when the tissue can be partially repaired and just use the bicep to fill the defect. Patient quite sedentary and uh, doesn't want aggressive surgery. And most important, the pain is the, the main complaint of the patient, not the weakness. And how do I cut the bicep? I want to cut the bicep this though, not at the brainoid. Why? Because this is one of the pictures from our study, the supplies came from the uh, anterior dorsal part of the bicep root. So if we cut it proximally, it can be a dead tissue. But if we leave the proximal part intact like that, uh, you may preserve the bus supply of the long head of the bicep. It can be a viable graph. That's something need to be proved. And uh, for the second group, uh, you, you have the patient with the weakness more than the pain. And if the patient has the arthritis, no doubt, you go for refreshment. But if patient doesn't have the arthritis, and again, they are too young to do a replacement, and the reverse of the shoulder is too aggressive. They have a choice doing ACR, tendon transfer, and ACR. So tendon transfer, you need quite a large uh, incision sometimes. So how say about ACR? Since Yang Su touched it, I won't touch it, and won't repeat the ACR with the bicep, because you know the king of the ACR, the bicep, Yang Su, he is here. So I leave it with him. So like that is his literature. So when I will talk, I will talk about uh, anterior cable reconstruction. To me in my part, it is a, a slight modification of the bicep SCR. The different, you actually use the bicep to graph the anterior of the defect, which not only the bicep at the uh, roof level, and they create a trough, just like the young so did. And instead of stitching the bicep, they do a wrap around the bicep tendons and they call this as the entry cable reconstruction. And they did a study to, to show uh, that they want to see whether how good the entry cable can uh, normalize the superhead migration. And they thought they look at the cable is stage two and stage three of the tear. That entire supraspinatus has gone on, or stage three, that entire supraspinatus and entry half of infraspinatus. And the conclusion by using the bicep as an autologous graph, they can normalize the superior head migration and subacromian contractation without limit range of motion. Wow, that sounds uh, interesting to me. I show you the case. This is the uh, male, 68 years old. He hurt his shoulder three years ago, and uh, he, he can't uh, lift his shoulder that far and get some stiffness. So this is the x-ray looks like, narrowing the humor joist space, you know, I mean, acromial humor distance. The MI show that uh, it's up there, a trophy of the supraspinatus and some subscapularis. So this is the infraspinatus in the back. This show that we, infraspinatus is not too bad, but, but you can, this is the bicep, it's degenerate right there. So I would say, hey, this is not a good bicep, should kill it. Now I'm, 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 I'm thinking about what, what should we do. So we, first what I did, I divide the, the infraspinatus. Uh, and then I put the anchor. Well, this is for repair the infraspinatus. And this is for the, uh, almost on the middle of humerus, just to uh, repair the bicep. So what I did, this is, uh, I would like to repair my infraspinatus right there. This is a cut, a bicep. I would like to move it right there, right there. And this is the, okay, sorry. So the, the tip of doing this, uh, I the proper tension of the, uh, the bicep and the cable reconstruction, it will be a reduction of 30 degree. You want to external rotate about 30 degree. Due to less external rotation, it might constrain the motion of the shoulder. I usually repair it with the infraspinatus, and then you need to address the uh, subscapularis, make sure that it's a uh, good repair or is intact. 
So this video is about the how we stitch uh, the infraspinal trans back to the hole like that. This is almost like a simple uh, cuff repair, but you put the infraspinal trans back down here and put the bicep back down here. So again, like that. And then you start to tie. So in my series, I didn't, I didn't do the double row just like Yang Su did. I did the double row for everything, combine all the uh, infraspinal trust and biceps to get together just like these pictures. So this is picture after repair. The infraspinal trust come down. Uh, right, right here, this is the bicep. You still can have some hole of the defect of the cuff a little bit right there, right there. It's not too bad though. It's covered the head pretty well. Uh, I showed her the last case. This is a lady with the recurrent dislocation. Uh, when she was waking up like that, and just a torn subscapularis, a supraspinatus, and the uh, infraspinatus. And uh, her subscap is barely torn. You can't really see anything much right there. In the front part, right there, you can't see the subscap. And supraspinatus has gone, completely gone. This is the infraspinatus somewhat left there. So when I deal with this calibration, I usually pair the label because we can't, we do not show that we can reconstruct the subscapularis well. And then you, this is a look, this is infraspinatus. See that you can bring it back to the front like that. Not too bad though. You can cover it with the, some part of the, uh, possible part of uh, the infraspinatus. So we stitch just like we did with the suture anchor, get it close to the bicep. And this is a picture, this is before, before the uh, surgeries and after repair, we repaired the infraspinatus, covered the humor head, and we did the uh, uh, tenodesis of the, the anterior cable reconstruction of the biceps and tie them together. And for the subscapular list, like I said, if you want to do the ACR or restoring the force couple, you've got to have the good Subscapularis. This is something like that. So we did the pick major transfer in this case. And she came last week for three months follow-ups. Her motion is active forward elevation now. It went to up to 90s. Passive is going 180. She has some way to go. So I should not conclude about this case. So in my thought, I think bicep can be your friends. So uh, in the past, we always said, uh, I'm a bicep killer. In my thought, you may need to use it or preserve it if it doesn't look badly because you know that 25% of bicep uh, uh, can be retired and you can use the bicep as a graft in the second surgeries. So think about it before doing anything. And row of it, you can graft the defect in the young sedentary pain predominant. I'm even thinking about you have a retired type two, uh, cutting at this time, graft the bicep between the stump and the remaining tissue probably can be one of the option. You can use it to uh, super reconstruction or anti cable reconstruction. Uh, select the patient properly. Thank you very much for your attention. Okay, thank you, Shanagan. Thank you, Shanagan. So, uh, you okay, Shanagan? Uh, sorry, I was at the beginning, I don't feel well. I threw up <laughs> three times with the, because of the morphine injection, but I'm getting better. I'm ready. Sorry about that. From the audience. No, still don't have the question for Shanakan from the audience right now. Yes. Yeah, we can take it later, okay? Later, right? Yeah, okay. I, need, I need some rest too. You need some rest, okay. Good. So uh, we said maybe later, Dr. Pakasit, okay? Yep. yep. Uh, next is the Dr. Dr. Egawit from Sililat Hospital. He's talking about the massive air pebble. He used a side-to-side -side bicep repair to the rotator cuff. So, Dr. Egawit, you're ready? Ready. Um, yeah. Thank Perfect. you, Mr. Chairman. You yes. see my slide? Yeah, uh, very well. Hello, Yang Su and um, our staff. Thanks for inviting me here. My talk is about the result of side-to-side -side repair for massive rotator cuff tear.
for our choice of treatment in this type of patient, we talking about the partial cup retain using the graph or augmentation or SCR, which is uh, our topic today. What is the partial repair? We try to cover the footprint as much as possible. We have many techniques, but uh, the one I'm going to speak is about the side-to-side -side or margin convergence repair. This is how uh, margin convergence repair was done. If we pull the tendon, we cannot reach the footprint, so we tie it at the apex, making it uh, side to side and fix at the back and in the front. But the thing is, we have a defect here at the apex of the chair, like this. Anyway, I think uh, the clinical improvement is quite good. Many, many papers mention about the good short and midterm improvement, but the retail rate is about uh, 40%. For my practice, I reported in 2018. I did study from 2014 to 2017. I have a 200 repair cup tear. 139 was treated conservatively, which I like it because uh, if the patient become better by themselves, I won't touch it. And around 90 of the kids, I was uh, do surgery. Most of them, uh, I did arthroscopic surgery, which is a partial repair. For the clinical result, uh, everyone don't need a further surgery like uh, converted to shoulder arthroplasty. The shoulder score itself is quite good. It's uh, improved from 35 to 75. Also the, the pain score is, is much better. For the structural result, uh, the post-op MRI study, actually I think there is not anatomical repair. So I think every repair is varied among patients. So I think there is no proper classification for the partial cuff repair. So I think this is the gap of our knowledge. Jimmy, I think I tried to um, elaborate more about the MRI study. So I would like to classify the MRI study in three categories. The first one is fully healed. The second one is partial repair. And the third one is complete repair. For uh, the, the MRI picture is like this. This one is completely healed and the thickness is restored with a very good thickness like this. Uh, the second one I think is more common because the tendon itself is very thin. So even though we try to repair it, the tendon itself, even though it's healed, but it's still thin like this one. For the uh, side-to-side -side repair, like you, like you see this, we have a defect at the apex. So we should, uh, we should think that because we have a defect, so we cannot expect a, a thick tendon at the defect. So it's just like this. For the sagittal cut, we see a defect at the apex. This is also the comp completely repair after surgery. So the MRI is pretty much the same, except uh, two or three more anchors there. Um, for the result of margin convergence repair, um, one year of MRI study, so I have a completely healed for 46%, partial healed 27, and complete repair for 27. In 2018, I met uh, Yang Su at a class meeting. At that time, he introduced the best step rerouting technique to me, which is very interesting. But uh, I actually did not follow him right away because um, from the massive cup tear, some biceps may completely torn, some may be hypertrophy. I, I think this one is interesting because uh, hypertrophy 
it's maybe a biologic process because uh, the body try to depress the humeral head by making the biceps stronger. So we might we might be able to use that. Uh, before 2019, I think bicep is the source of pain. So I tend to do tenotomy and I rarely do tenodysis in the elderly patient. But after 2019, it's take me one year to think. And I think that uh, instead of tenotomy, I try to use the biceps to augment the repair site by leaving the origin intact because of, uh, I think, the bus supply, like Chanaka mentioned before, may come from the origin of the biceps. But uh, the source of pain, it may be another thing. If we leave it there, we put it into the repair site, it may cause the pain in the future. So I don't know. But anyway, I, instead of just cut it, I try to use it. This is how I use the bicep in rotator cuff repair. I do a groove tenotomy. Try to pull it into the joint as much as possible and mobilize the biceps to the mid part of the defect. I repair the infraspinitus and also repair the biceps using the same anchor. And I did the same thing to the front. I repaired the biceps and also the supraspinatus. So most of the case is a side to side repair, but uh, some case if you have a uh, thick tendon enough, I can, uh, I think you can do a double row repair. After I tie it in the front and in the back, you see the defect at the proximal part. So you can add another side to side suture stitch like this, maybe one or two, two stitch. Right now the defect was closed, not like the usual side to side repair, like this. Uh, I did the uh, augmentation of the biceps, or you can say the SCR of the bicep since uh, May 2019. So until now, I have uh, 27 patients, average uh, 65 years old. All of the case is completely torn of the supra and infraspinatus. The, the width of the tear side is around four centimeter. My longest one of the follow is 14 months. The shoulder score is improved from 38 to 83. The pain score become better, it's around two. The range of motion itself, I think, uh, if I compare to the, the previous uh, series, at five to seven months, it's become full range of motion and seems like it's faster than the, my previous series. Anyway, I think uh, you don't, this, yeah, we have to think about that because my case, I might choose the patient different from the others because uh, all of my case, have a good range of motion before. Only four case has a pseudo paralysis, but uh, they become reversible after I do surgery. So the result is pretty good. They do have a good range of motion. Yeah. Um, for the post-op MRI, um, I expect more, but uh, because of the COVID-19, so many patients was delayed for the MRI study. I only got four MRI back. So of the four MRI I have fully healed in three and one complete repair, like this one. The, the, lower, the lower picture is the before surgery. The upper is after surgery. You see the a good continuity of the tendon and also the bicep root. This is another one, the pre-op MRI. and the post-op MRI. Quite good continuity of the tendon and also the graph. To me, I think um, for bicep ACR or augmentation, 
uh, I have a good short term result. It compare comparable to the repair alone, but uh, I think I need more study like um, maybe RCT or the MRI after surgery more. I think it's less invasive than a free graft from maybe fasciolata. It has a low cost. The patient selection is, is very important. If you choose the patient that have a pain problem more than function, you should get a good result. And also the key factor, I think, uh, which is a false couple between subscapularis and teres minor. Even though the patient have only teres minor, the result is also very good. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Dr. Ekovit. Very nice talk. Uh, Ekovit, do you, you don't believe, you don't trust Yang Su Kim, right? Why you do different? Uh, I don't Yang say I don't trust him. I think his technique is it's very interesting, but uh, I don't want to leave the distal bicep. Okay. Uh, like, like he did. I think because uh, I think maybe the distal bicep might cause a pain. So just cut it at the group and use it at the graph is, is my um, my thought. Mm -hmm. Yang Su, do you believe I take a bit? Cut the bicep. You did cut the bicep. Yang Su, can you comment? Yeah, so uh, I fully enjoy the, the ache, the presentation. So I have a question. Do you always cut the biceps before using? Yes, I will cut the bicep before I use it. Oh, uh, is there any special reason to cut the biceps? Um, because before I tend to do a bicep tenotomy, but right now instead of tenotomy at the at the screen to work, I just do tenotomy at the bicepital group and just mobilize it and use it as a graph. Mm -hmm. So is a uh, yeah. So I sometimes uh, when I uh, when I start my rerouting technique, sometimes I sometimes cut the biceps after rerouting. But I think it's a uh, keep the continuity without cutting. It's more stable. So that's the reason why I didn't cut. And the one mm -hmm. another point is uh, uh, Dr. A told uh, just said. Uh, just right now is uh, uh, the the reason why I cut the biceps is to move from the group to the footprint. But if you release the biceps or around the biceps group, you can move without cutting. So you don't need to cut the biceps. Mm -hmm. And one other thing is uh, <clears throat> marginal conversion I sometimes do is a kind of I. Uh, before com comment here, uh, comment this, I like to um, introduce my concept of a rotate cup repair. Is the first step is to repair the by repair the cuff tendon is an anatomical repair level. Anatomical repair is basic. I I try, every orthopedic surgeon have a kind of some myth to, re to restore the anatomy. URIF. When you go to fracture, so anatomy reduce is the best goal to all the uh, orthopedic surgeon. So this principle can be applied to rotator cuff. Every shoulder surgeon try to cover the whole footprint. Mm -hmm. They believe this is a uh, restore the original anatomy. But interestingly, shoulder is a little bit different with the other joint. Thinking about the lattice procedure and levers, ramp size, all this procedure is not anatomic reconstruction, reconstruction. Reconstruction. They're focusing on the biologic, biologically, and they're thinking about the balancing, and the sometimes is functional. So I call it as a functional repair. Mm -hmm. so even though we didn't, we cannot uh, cover the whole footprint. If there is a repair of the bio, uh, bio, biomechanically, and I think it will work. 
So yeah. bicep lifting is another is non anatomical reconstruction. Yeah, it's very uh, interesting. Biceps are still there, but we take it out the biceps original group, mm -hmm. break down the original anatomy to move the footprint. It's very kind of some uh, nonsense makes sense, but. I think it will work because it's biomechanically making sense. Yeah. Yeah, I'll rest you. So marginal conversion. Should I got your back? Prior to the reduced uh, anatomy. But this is very important. But uh, additionally, we have to think about the uh, uh, biomechanical and the function after operation. So is I reduce the biceps and sometimes making the marginal conversion to couple print. Yeah, yeah, this is a, a question from Yangsu. Yangsu. Yes, did you ever uh, research with on the failure bicep SCR? Oh, uh, yeah. Is that the case? What did you find of the cause of the failure and what is the it's not, right? it look like? Yeah. Cause of failure? I cannot yeah, hear like you. Like a rupture of the SCR or whatever, whatsoever you, you file. I did. Uh, I have two cases of bicep routing cases, repair, and I convert to the reverse. Mm -hmm. So, it's a bicep right. tear. Bicep tear and has gone, and everything is mixed, messed up. There's a cuff. The repair the cuff is has gone, and the repair the already and the cuff the after party. Mm -hmm. But it's, it's that case is pull uh, out. Yeah, not put out, not pull out, wear out. There's no biceps oh, okay. there. Yeah, no it's a, maybe uh, after re after tear somewhere else, then is a uh, is subside and the uh, absorption somewhere else. Yeah. So yeah, so this is a is a finding of a repair cases. Yes. How how about the entry cable reconstruction? Which one do you like compared to the bicep SCR and entry cable reconstruction? I, for me, look. Quite, quite similar. Except you cut the bicep and uh, and move the bicep to graft the entry a different. Uh, Which one do you like? Oh, you question to me. Yes. Is a uh, bicep anterior cable reconstruction introduced by Maxwell Pa? Okay. Yes. Right. Yeah, Maxwell, yes. just friend of mine, is very bright guy, and uh, but his concept is totally different. He tried to reconstruct with the anterior cable. So anterior cable is a very strange concept to us in Korea also. Mm -hmm. They try to make a uh, first couple, first cable and anterior cable. He tried to reconstruct the first couple. And he didn't make a new groove and didn't, uh, they cut the biceps from the lateral and didn't uh, to using the two anchor, just the soft tissue tendon disease kind of. It's totally different procedure with my BL technique. So, uh, uh, so I expect the biceps, relative to the biceps is compressed the humor head. This is a, and the function as an internal sprint, but Maxwell's concept is a anterior reconstruction, anterior cable reconstruction is a, uh, re making a new force couple and the soft tissue tendon disease effect no group and no anchor for biceps and cut the biceps after uh, fixing. So totally different technique. Yeah. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you. So um, now there's two sides. Yang Su side, the minority because you cut, you, you didn't cut the bicep. But Chanakan and Ekovit cut the bicep. Okay. So now we move to Dr. Tri. Yeah, it's in your is not cutting is not an issue. Yeah, it, it's a similar yeah, concept. So you can okay, cut, okay. but anyhow. So, Dai, you are the last one. Okay. Yeah. Hello, everyone. Let's make a conclusion. Okay, thank you, Ajahn Chai. Uh, nice to see you today. My name is Dai Pom Sang from Sikarin Hospital, Bangkok, Thailand. It is my great honor to be here. Today, the topic is all about uh, rotator cuff repair using the biceps augmentation. And my talk is about the management of irreparable cuff tear. And at the end of my presentation, I will discuss about 
do we need to cut the distal bicep segment after using it as a local graft? Overview. I'm going to touch on the management of irreparable cup tear. We are going to talk about the techniques and evidence of long head biceps augmentation. And I will answer the question, do we need to cut the distal segment at the end of this talk? Because we cannot close the gap of the irreparable cup tear, we just cannot bring the tendon back to the anatomical footprint. So we need to use the biceps tendon to fill the gap or to augment our cup repair. And what is the uh, irreparable cup tear? There are many studies that propose the following definitions. Basically, uh, irreparable cup tear are large defects. They are usually more than four or five centimeters. A chromial humor distance is narrow, usually less than five millimeters. Fatty degeneration, cutane yegre, three or four, and the tendon retraction to glenoid level. All of these are the factors that we use to predict the irreparable calf tear preoperatively. As you can see, there are many surgical options for a patient who has irreparable calf tear. We have bicep augmentation, SCR tendon transfer, and we also have the reverse. Regarding management of the irreparable cuff tear, if the patient has severe medical conditions, low demand or mild symptoms, we can choose conservative treatment. However, patients who already have arthritis or cuff arthropathy, Hamada, grade three or four, and they are over 65 years old, reverse shoulder replacement may be a better option. But in our practice, the majority of irreparable cup tear patients, they are active, high demand. Some may have pseudo paralysis, severe symptoms, and they don't have cup tear arthropathy. What is the best treatment for this patient? We have uh, many treatment options, as you can see, for this group of patients. With each option, there are advantages and disadvantages. As a surgeon, you need to know the pros and cons of every procedure that you are going to recommend to your patients. And today we are focusing on just one procedure, the partial repair with biceps augmentation. We can use long head biceps to augment in irreparable cup tear. The techniques can be divided into two groups. The first one is using the biceps as a soft tissue interposition to bridge the defect. Professor Yonggali, Professor Itoi, and Professor Abrams have proposed their surgical techniques with good results. The second group of biceps augmentation is what we call superior capsular reconstruction. There are some variations of these techniques. Basically, we fix the biceps graft at two points. One is supraglenoid and another one is at greater tuberosity. Supraglenoid, greater tuberosity, supraglenoid and greater tuberosity. Imitating the native superior capsule, as you can see, there are many options. Different surgeons have tried different procedures and have made different recommendations, but we still lack long-term clinical results. And recently, we have two clinical studies that report good results from BICEP SCR. We have, okay, we have soft tissue interposition and we have SCR from BICEP. Now, uh, now let's look at some studies from Korea and Japan. The first study is from Professor Yonge Lee. He has 37 shoulders and conclude that biceps augmentation was effective in achieving fewer structural failures. The healing rate is 58% in augmentation group and 26% in non-augmentation group. Among the two groups, they have same clinical outcomes. Professor Itoi from uh, Japan perform open surgery and use biceps tendon as a patch graft. 
he has nearly 100% complete healing rate. However, this study from Korea found no significant difference in the clinical outcomes and retail rates between biceps augmentation and partial repair without augmentation. Additional biceps augmentation appears to have no benefit in tendon healing. The retail rates were the, the same, it's about 40%. Finally, this systematic review shows that only eight studies meet the same criteria as high quality studies. The studies are only small case series without control groups. And they conclude that no recommendations to do biceps autograph augmentation could be provided based on current evidence. Now I think you can see the over, overview picture of where we are right now with biceps augmentation. And obviously, we still need many more biomechanic and long-term clinical studies to draw a definite conclusion. I've already talked about the principal and the clinical studies of biceps augmentation. Now it's time to answer this question. The question, should we cut the distal segment of biceps augmentation like this? Why is it important to know whether we cut it or not? After extensive research, I have to admit that I still don't know the right answer yet. I found that nobody has focused on this particular issue before, and there is no evidence supporting it either way. Maybe in the Q&A session, we can discuss with our senior surgeons, Dr. Yang Su and uh, uh, Dr. Ban Cha, Dr. Chanaka, Dr. Ekwit can help us. Uh, perhaps with their expertise, we will learn the, uh, the answer today. However, if we consider the, the blood supply of the long head biceps tendon, its main blood supply is from the circumflex humeral artery that run from distal here to proximal. So if we cut the distal segment of the long head biceps, we will definitely cut the blood supply to the more proximal part that we use it as a local graft. We will be changing from vascularized tendon graft to non-vascularized tendon graft. This may decrease the healing rate and we can have graft necrosis and may increase the risk of infection. So my assumption is that we may have a higher possibility of graft healing if we preserve this whole segment of long head bicep because we don't cut the blood supply from the, the circumflex humeral artery. What if the biceps tendon have pathology in the groove or below the groove, as Professor Yonggeri described as a hidden lesion? The patients will have postoperative pain in the bicipital groove. To avoid that, we may need to cut the biceps distal to the augmentation point, and we may add another fixation as the biceps tenodesis in the groove or subpectoral biceps tenodesis, or we just leave it as a biceps tenotomy. Unfortunately, we could have uh, inflammation or other pathology distal to the augmentation point, as in this picture. So we have to cut the biceps and do the tenodesis or just tenotomy. In summary, we can classify the surgical techniques of biceps augmentation into two groups, soft tissue interposition and SCR. These days, there is no recommendation to do biceps augmentation based on current evidence. Regarding the distal segment of biceps, don't cut it because you may risk cutting the blood supply of the graft. But if there is pathology below the groove, cut it. Thank you. Thank you, Dry. Really nice talk.
So now we have you, now you we have, have a question. Beside you are staying with Yangsu or with Chanagan and Egawit. Just between. <laughs> <laughs> Just between. Okay. Depend on the pathology. <laughs> Okay, I totally, that's yeah, yeah, I totally agree with the try. Is yes, and the this point is a uh, blood supply and the main mm -hmm. in the vascularity is very, very important, I think. Yeah, and uh, even though there is a little bit degeneration or partial each partial tail region in the group, yeah, when you re have to remove at the reroot and we fix the biceps to the bone. Mm -hmm. There's yeah. no, no, no moving anymore. So I think uh, pain is coming from the friction. Yes. Friction in the biceps group. Biceps is dynamically moving, mm -hmm. tendon. But if you fix the, to the bone, this bicep tendon, this is the effect. There's no more motion. Yeah. No more, no motion anymore. So we can, yeah, we can prevent uh, pain or and further damage you have to fixation so we can do the uh we don't need to cut the biceps after we so young su that's one question they're asking you dilute the bicep you change the vector force of the bicep from front to the side so that still have the vector force that try to pull the bicep back you know yeah so it, you fix only one anchors right now your new technique is that enough? Because the force of bicep is too much. Sometimes the bicep can slip back. Okay, good, good. good. So with one fixed biceps with the lateral low, mm -hmm. it's a three strand, three strand. So I'm using the three strand to is the is grab the biceps. Yes. Times. Sometimes the two strand is I think enough. Mm -hmm. And then the other thing is uh, making the group more deeply uh, than original concept. Oh yeah. So is a grooving the biceps is the a big, grab big, big trough, right? Big tunnel. Yeah, trough. Yeah, big trough. Yes. So grab trough. the biceps, and then medial anchor. Have a insert to the medial anchor. Insert to the anterior posterior using the two anchor. Mm -hmm. One is the anterior, and the second is the posterior to the biceps. So yes. they make a they make a not fix the biceps itself, but restriction the by bi restriction the biceps moving. So I think trapping, it's a right? young yeah. so you trap it into the into yeah, the trap. That's right, trapping. Yeah. So this is I think is stable enough. Mm -hmm. So young so there's a question about your first series, right? You 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 don't recommend to do that. So now your most update edition. Uh -huh. Yeah. Yeah. So yeah. some still confusing. Yeah. What's the difference between your first series and now the update one? Can you conclude? The is, uh, a bit compared with the original technique, my yeah. is update to modify technique has a, a difference with uh, so many factors. The first one is uh, not. Uh, you know what? Can I keep on? Oh yeah, you keep on. You yeah, yeah. When you tie the lateral tie. Is uh, making a loop not strongly. Mm -hmm. but, uh, yeah, biceps just not not strongly, just uh, releasing the looping. Mm -hmm. So restrict your biceps itself, not fix the biceps. Yeah. So preserve the vascularity. That's important factor. So Yang Su from Chanakan study, he did the vascularity study about the biceps. So he found that the bicep vascular is coming from proximal. It's not from distal, right? Should so, well, can, can I yeah. mention to that? Uh, first, first is this, I would like to make a comment to Price talk. There are two absolutely wrong. First, they call us as a senior surgeon. This is not right. Okay. <laughs> need to fix that. Okay. Meniscus okay. tear. So that you should accept wrong. a senior That's surgeon. This is for morphine effect. Hey. This is for morphine effect. It's not okay. Shinakan. Well, <laughs> the second issue about the, the vascular supply of the bicep. Well, they, they have both way of uh, supplying the bicep tendon. They come from the root of the bicep, from the crinoid side, and also come from the anterior humerus circumference. They actually mm -hmm. have a hypovascular area about two centimeters. 
from the insertion where the uh, you gonna repair it back to the bone. That is a hypovascular area. If you notice when you have a degenerative the biceps, most of the time it's happening where almost at the groove, right? In the that groove. is the that's a no good uh, uh, answer. That uh, which way is better cutting from each side? And when you repair the bicep, how can you know that you didn't disrupt the vascular supply or you, you reroute it, you didn't clean the tendon that uh, may damage the bicep supply as well. So we don't have a good answer for how to preserve when you reroute the bicep or cut from uh, this style of proximal. But in my thought, uh, very in order to maintain the proximal part, cutting from the distal is better. And I leave that up to the defect type if the defect is closest to the uh, to the glenoid, I cut it from the distal and move it over just like my case. And if it's closer to the footprint, sometimes you may have to cut it in the in the glenoid attachment and rotate the proximal part to cover the, the footprint part. I think that leads that to the defect. Yeah. Shinakan, there's um, one comment from the audience. They say that you cut the bicep, you have no head depression effect head depression effect. So Young Su, he didn't cut it. He had the effect of the head depression. What do you think about that? Well, I think it's up to what you think about it. I mean, for, for Young Su, I think he's combined. If I'm not getting your point wrong, Young Su, if I combine with the uh, superior capsule reconstruction plus the head depressing effect from the bicep to act both to help to depress the biceps. So what, in my thought, if you, you, you see when I usually do this procedure when have, I can partially repair the uh, infraspinatus and repair the subscap, it means that the first couple has been uh, restored oh. from the both side and then you, you do the bicep uh, to do a super capsular reconstruction all the humor hits that just like a check lane ligament yeah. uh, you know in this part, sometimes I still can't, I don't sure that the SCR is working just fine or it's just a balloon or a sorbitude graph to fill the defect to depress the humor head down. I'm not sure about the, what, what really happened in the real patients, mm -hmm. but actually both procedures work, work quite a number of percent of the patients. Yeah. I think you, you should do some comparative study, multi-center with Yangsu series and your series, right? It should be good. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Do you Whenever. agree? Whenever, welcome. Perfect. Yeah. So, uh, Prakasi, you have the question from the audience. Yeah, yeah. Ma many questions to Yang Su Kim. First, yeah. first question is: If the patient has clinically bicep pain, can we do mm -hmm. your BR? Do that, of course. Go for it. Go for it. You can do that because uh, this is a tendon DCT effect. So that's the best option. The biceps tendon, biceps pain before operation. We can be control the pain after rerouting the bicep back. Yeah, because Yang Su, he moved the bicep from the groove. Yeah. No pain in the groove because bicep oh, is not in right. anymore. <laughs> no tendon anymore in the groove. <laughs> no tendon in the groove. <laughs> pain on the lateral. Two pain okay. is gone. Okay. okay. Another, question. Another, another question is, is there any cramping or like a pop eye deformity or something like that? After yeah, I have. Have... yeah, I have. I have. There's a pop eye deformity. Uh, that case is a tear at the lateral, lateral tear. It's pop eye deformity. But if you tear the medial lobe, there's no pop eye deformity. So, mm -hmm. but I have some cases of pop eye deformity after real routine. So, there's a reason why I preserve the. The loose loop. Okay. Mm -hmm. Okay. The, the question for another two. So is that common, Yang Su? The pop eye after the surgery. Not common. Not common. Not not very common. Is a. Is I don't remember the percentage of a little bit twenty twenty five. Yeah. And, uh, twenty twenty five percent. Yeah. Okay. Another another same question to the the cutting one, Doctor Ekawit and Doctor Shanakan, please. The same question. Is there any uh, pop eye deformities in your. Stop, man. Take a bit. Take a bit. Okay, please, please open your microphone. And... You hear me? Hear me? Yeah, take a bit. Yes. Already. 
Yeah, uh, it's tenotomy effect, so you can expect a hundred percent of pop eye deformity. Mm -hmm. Okay. Yeah. Uh, another good question is, uh, what is your recommendation program for the BR Yang Su? Program. What is the What is the question again? Sorry. Uh, rehabilitation programs. A rehab. Rehab yep. is good. Rehabilitation. Uh, actually, you can you can see my paper with the Johnny journal regarding the rehabilitation protocol. One is a uh, it published the AJSM two thousand five fifteen sixteen. I don't remember exactly, but there is a compare with the both group. One group is a uh, early rehab, acceleration rehab. So we apply the CPM and the passive range of motion right after operation. The other group is a delayed operation, delayed rehab. It's a six weeks wear the brace. Nothing to that. During the six weeks, only wear the brace. No passive motion and the no pendulum and the no, uh, no manipulation. So compare with the both groups, but as a result, there's no significant difference both groups. So after that, after the study, I prefer the delayed rehabilitation. So after BR, I wear the brace six weeks. No passive motion, no CPM, nothing to that. Only wear the brace. And after six weeks, after the brace off, then uh, just pendulum allowed two weeks. And eight weeks, I check the MRI. Mm -hmm. If there is good, I started the active motion at the time. So mm -hmm. mostly it will take uh, more than 10 weeks to gain the get 80% of range, normal range of motion, uh, the patient, this VR patient. So I prep the delayed one. And uh, if a patient complain, usually delayed the patient, delayed, delayed rehabilitation, a uh, patient all, almost always complain the stiffness and pain around the seven, uh, around eight weeks, yes. eight of weeks, I gave an injection, joint injection. The there is right? concerning, yeah, there is concerning. Yang Su still on injection? Sorry? Still on injection at eight weeks, yeah, yeah, right? Steroid Ed injection on the joint. So there's a paper, you can okay. check the paper. So there is no harmful to the biceps healing, no uh, interruption, no is a bad effect to the tender healing. If you give the eight weeks uh, injection to the joint, not subacting space, to the joint to release the stiffness and pain. And then as a patient is a bit satisfied after injection then. Did you the, use other self, right? Outer self guide? Sorry? For injection. Did you use other self guide? Other side guide. Other side? Outer self. Outer self. Ultra sound. Yeah, sono guide. Outer sound guide. Ultra sound. Sono guide. Sono guide. Ultra sound guide. Uh, Glenohumeral joint injection. In the joint, not in subacromian space, right? Yeah, in the joint. In the joint, okay. Subacromian space is, I think, is, a, is a dangerous. Okay. Onto the repaired tendon surface. So avoid the beneath the tendon. Okay. Right. Just tip. Another tip. So, Yang Su, your question is no rehab, right? Simple. No, delayed Just rehab. Simple. Not no rehab. Delayed rehab. Delayed rehab. <laughs> after six weeks. After six motion. weeks. Yeah, after okay. six weeks. Start passive motion. Do you allow the patient move? the sling for six no, no, weeks, no. the elbow will stiff also. Because, uh, the bicep yeah. is uh, yeah, connected with the uh, elbow. So My God. it's not allowed the bicep elbow motion. You have any elbow stiffness after that? Uh, but it's not, not that much, not that much. A little bit stiff. It's a, yeah, it's an improvement less than one week. Oh, really? Yeah. Good. Yang Su, one uh -huh. question from, from the audience. How you set the tension? Like Shinakan said, he set the tension in abduction, 30 degree, external rotation, 30 degree. How about you? Yeah, similar. 
I prefer the lateral decubitus position when I do the arthroscopic repair, rotator repair. Mm -hmm. So usually abduction is a 30 degree in traction. I okay. keep that position, then I did a re rooted biceps. Okay. So that, yeah. Same position like Shanagan. Yeah, that's okay. right. Good. Okay, any more yeah. questions? Yes, yes, yes. Uh, do we still have a time? Yeah, we, we still have the eight minutes. Eight minutes. Eight minutes at um, uh, 45. 45. 48. Okay, so I, so I continue with another question. Yes. Question about uh, the cutting, the cutting bicep. Uh, the question said that have you consider cutting the bicep lower, lower down so you got the long, the long graph and doubling it to reduce the tension in the wider chair. Maybe Dr. Ekavit or Dr. Shanakan. Yeah, can, I, can I keep my, my thought about that first? Yeah. So first, I think, uh, well, it's depend on what you want to do with the, the graph. If you want to feel the defect, of course, getting a longer graph can feel more defect. But if you want to less start superior Lastly, you want what you want, you, you want a proper tension of that graph. So sometimes too long is not answered at all. Unless you do a proper tension first and then you make a U-turn of the graph and fill the defect and reattach it at the green eye with one more angle. Right. That that I have never done that, but well sounds is all right to me to see. You maybe you may discover a yeah. new way. Yeah, that's, that's, I might say U-turn. <laughs> The neck technique, right? You mentioned. <laughs> the bicep, neck. you turn, whatever you call it. Yeah, yeah, it's kick off neck, not you turn. It's published also, yeah. You go like zigzag, right, in the green oil and it's yeah. like neck. Yes, continue with Shinagan. No, no, I, that, that's my quite answer. I, was, I can read about his thought. Um, okay. I think uh, what, what I want from the biceps is to to augment first, second is to like work like a T noticing effect to keep it keep the shoulder in abduction. Maybe my my ankle a little bit more. I tend to do in forty five degree. So only to only to function I need. So the longer may be maybe not really help and it's maybe more clumsy to to take the graph lower down. Mm -hmm. But you have to open more. To me, I think just just pull it from the groove and cut it as long as you can should be enough. Yeah. Okay. Good. And maybe the last question because um uh so we can advertising our webinar next webinar and the meeting. So Professor Yang Su Kim, how deep is the groove you recommended in your in your third edition, your newest one? Yeah. The trough, right? You mean the trough? So, yeah, thank you yeah, very much. Trough, good trough. question. So trough depth, you mean, is a, uh, are using the motorized bar, the diameter is a four millimeter. So I, uh, uh, I try to, this motorized bar is bearing, bearing the bone surface on, underneath the bone surface. So I try to make a trough more than a five millimeter depth, more than five millimeter depth. That's, uh, that's uh, this is deep enough to trap the biceps tendon. This is my technique. Okay. Okay. Okay, Dr. Vanchar, now I think now we have a time to advertise our. Yeah, okay. So um, I would like to um, invite Dr. Um, Chanakan, he's the, our next president and our cast president. Can you share the advertisement of our APCAS meeting next year? No, oh, next year, this year, in December. Okay, may I bring up your slide, please? Yeah. Okay. So, uh, you know, uh, today uh, we get a good crowd of the people. Uh, during the maximum uh, talk, is we reach almost 200 of our participants, right? yes. 180 some things. And it makes up a very international uh, participant, I think this is a very good sign for us to collaborate and try to share our expertise between the countries. Of course, on behalf of currently, I'm a president of the APCAS Society, 
we have a limitation by the COVID-19 to make us unable to join each other. I think one way to do the webinar by app class, by Korean or to combine and help each other to distribute and to continue our uh, knowledge to share and to, that would give a best benefit for the patients. And if the situation allowed it, now we still plan the AppCast in this year, which will be happen on December the 3rd to the 5th this year, I remember this year. So of course at the moment, I can't really give you 100% that the meeting will, will happen. In Thailand, the situation is very well controlled. We have no new case that happened in Thailand for more than 40 days. But we know surrounding or other countries still still have some problem with that. And we hopefully by the time, that we have like six months uh, left. If by the time that uh, we have the uh, opportunity, we try to host that. So book your calendar, book your calendar. don't go anywhere, come to Thailand. Thailand is very fun place, right, Yangsu? Yeah. <laughs> so please come to Thailand and uh, uh, you, you can, find the uh, information on this meeting on the World Wide Web dot appcast 2020 dot org. Uh -huh. Okay. Yeah. Thank you, Shanagan. That that is the 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 banner of the meeting. Awesome appcast 2020. Yeah. And uh, hopefully we can see everyone's there. Okay. Th yeah. That's the message I want to share. Thank you very much. Uh, Yang Su, thank you, thank you, Bancha, Ekawit, Pai, and Pakaset. Yeah, thank you very much. So today we learned a lot. Yeah, thank you, our president. We learned a lot. Bicep is not our enemy anymore, right? From now on, bicep is a good friends, right? Don't kill it. Don't kill it anymore. <laughs> Don't kill the bicep anymore. Don't kill it okay, anymore. Okay, thank you, everyone. Thank you, Yang Su. Hi, thank you, Janakan, my patient. He's hey, a big yeah, hand. Hi. He's a great part. Thank you, Sha Ekawit, Chai, and also Prakasit. Okay, and also the uh, participants. Today we have nearly 200. Yeah, that's a very really wow. good. Okay, so mm. good night, everyone, and see you again in two days. We have another webinar on this Saturday. It's about the patrofemoral joy instability. Okay, yeah. very good. Yeah, thanks, everyone, and good night. Have a nice day. Bye. Have a good, good night. night. Bye. Bye. And I can't cry, ache. Yang Su, good night. Yeah.